we expect March CPA, CPI headline inflation to be extraordinarily elevated due to Putin's price hike. Inflation is at an all-time high since the 1980s, and it's all Putin's fault. Or is it? My name is James Lee. Welcome to my channel, 5149, where I talk business, politics, and society. And today, we're going to talk about inflation. Specifically, I want to break down the government's attempt to obfuscate the truth about inflation for the sake of political expediency. The headline number comes in as expected, hot, 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 it up 8.5%, usurped 79 8.5% remains a 41-year high. <laughs> that guy is way too excited about inflation. It's hot, hot, hot. What are we doing here? Are we selling hot dogs at a ball game? We're talking about people's livelihoods here. But yes, based on the latest CPI report that just came out, Inflation is at 8.5%, the biggest and fastest increase we've seen since 1981, which is 40 years ago. Now, 8.5 sounds really high, and, and many headlines are kind of shock and awe. But the question is, does that feel right to you? Does 8.5 feel right to you, at least for the audience um, watching who are in America? Because to me and many others, inflation feels a lot higher than 8.5 percent for some reason right putting gas prices aside i can't be the only one right people have felt this like when going to the grocery store to buy food why does it feel like the price hikes are much more drastic not six or eight percent but like 30 percent like we see some people on reddit making that exact observation well i'm here to tell you that the official inflation number that the government puts out and that the media reports on might be a lie. Inflation is calculated by something called the Consumer Price Index, or CPI. The CPI basically takes the cost of things around you, which estimates the cost of living each year. Based on how much more expensive things around you are becoming, they're able to calculate inflation. So if the cost of living becomes 2% more expensive, inflation is said to be at 2%. So that sounds pretty simple, right? But what if they wanted to manipulate the figures of inflation? It seems that this could possibly be happening at this time. Previously, the inflation was calculated by comparing the cost of a constant basket of supermarket goods over time. But that is not what happens now. Today, the US government is actually able to manipulate that basket in order to determine what inflation stats are presented. For example, let's say the price of steak increases by 10% in just one year. Instead of fairly judging that steak has gotten more expensive and taking this into account with inflation calculations, they do something else instead. They substitute the steak for much cheaper hamburger meat, which they say is basically the same thing, but it's not. And they do this with all sorts of items to keep inflation numbers low. All right, that sounds like a conspiracy, the government manipulating data to deceive the American people, but is it a conspiracy? This is according to reporting from Forbes magazine, quote, the government has a few resources at its disposal to manipulate the CPI. First, the Bureau of Labor Statistics operates under a veil of secrecy. The raw data used to calculate the CPI is not available to the public. But I don't understand the pattern of the government not releasing the underlying raw data of a study or report. They just say, this is the conclusion, trust us. I mean, what is that all about? If, if there's nothing to hide, shouldn't we be able to examine the raw data for ourselves? The following is from Investopedia, quote, originally the CPI was determined by comparing the price of a fixed basket of goods and services spanning two different periods. In this case, the CPI was a cost of goods index. However, over time, the U.S. Congress embraced the view that the CPI should reflect changes in the cost to maintain a constant standard of living. Consequently, the CPI has evolved into a cost of living index. The overall result tends to be a lower CPI. However, critics view the methodological changes and the switch from a cost of goods index to a cost of living index as a purposeful manipulation that allows the U.S. government to report a lower CPI. So those are two mainstream sources questioning the legitimacy of the CPI. And, and listen, I, I can maybe get behind the idea of updating the, the basket of goods as time goes on, but if the calculation or the bias in the calculation is always in one direction, that raises red flags for me. 
John Williams, a U.S. economist and analyst of government reporting, prefers a CPI or inflation measure calculated using the original methodology based on a basket of goods having quantities and qualities fixed. All right, so let's take a look at the data if we were to measure inflation consistently. Based on the old way of calculating inflation recommended by economist John Williams, the current inflation numbers wouldn't be the officially reported 8.5%, which is what the red line in the graph shows, but actually much higher at about 165 17% as shown by the blue line. So, so what this means is that, no, we're not crazy when we're you know, when we go to the store and see astronomical prices and then be told, oh no, inflation is only three or six or even eight and a half percent. No, real inflation is actually much higher and I think we can all feel it. You said this is temporary, you know, you've, you've noted before that inflation is going to wane or is expected to wane by the end of the year. Is that still your belief? These, that continues to be the projection of the Federal Reserve, of outside economists, and we really rely on them for their projections. But there is also no question that uh, inflation may be higher for the next few months than it would have been without, the Russia, without President Putin and Russia's further invasion into Ukraine, particularly due to higher energy prices. And obviously they will watch that, and we are watching that, but that is definitely having an impact. That was Jen Psaki, the White House Press Secretary, on March 10th. 2022, assuring the public that inflation is temporary and, of course, blaming inflation on Putin, Russia, and the war in Ukraine. And the one thing I've yet to mention is that CPI, once again, the, the main inflation indicator that the government and the media like to cite, is measured using a 12-month trailing average, meaning that recent events like Russia and the Ukraine conflict couldn't possibly explain the magnitude of the inflation we're experiencing at least not to the degree asserted by the government and the media. I think there could be a little bit of a misdirection going on here. The government can implement many types of economic policy, like decreasing people's taxes and creating jobs through public infrastructure projects, but it actually can't just increase the money supply. The central bank determines how much money is in circulation at a time. So why can't central banks authorize the printing of unlimited money to help an economy in crisis? They could, but that's a short-term solution that doesn't necessarily boost economic growth in the long term and can actually hurt the economy. Why? With more money in circulation, manufacturers of goods like food, clothing, and cars could respond to demand simply by raising prices rather than manufacturing more of these goods and creating new jobs in the process. This would mean you could no longer buy as much with the same amount of money, a situation known as inflation. You mean if we print a bunch of money, the price of goods will go up. Oh boy, it looks like that's exactly what we've been doing for years. This graph from the St. Louis Fed shows the amount of money in circulation, a metric known as M2 and it's been increasing for quite some time now with an alarming, quite an alarming parabolic increase in 2020 and 2021. Look at that. So it's not Putin, it's not Russia, it's not Ukraine. The folks who govern, either elected or unelected in the case of the Federal Reserve, want to be able to find convenient narratives to explain inflation rather than to have to take responsibility for the situation they've created by the decisions that they've made. A recent headline from the Wall Street Journal, Jerome Powell is wrong. Printing money causes inflation. The Fed chairman insists the growth of M2, that's referring to the money supply graph that we just saw, doesn't have important implications. The math shows otherwise. So Jerome Powell, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, has basically claimed over and over that there is no connection between money and inflation. And so if Mr. Powell is right and all that is outdated thinking, then when looking back through economic data, the equation of exchange shouldn't be able to predict prices. But looking at this chart, when we took the past 60 years of economic data and the rate of change form of the identity we explained above, it predicted price changes almost perfectly. The truth of the matter is that our economy or our society in general is built on propping up the stock market. The CNBC clip I played earlier as the guy is announcing these astronomically devastating inflation numbers, most of that screen 
is taken up by the prices of the various stock indexes. Money is no object if we're talking about juicing the stock market. Remember when the stocks took a, a nosedive after everyone freaked out about the coronavirus in March of 2020? Well, the first thing the Fed did was not to make sure regular Americans were gonna be okay. Their first priority was to inject $1.5 trillion into the stock market. But that doesn't necessarily mean that there's a conflict of interest here. Powell is just doing the best he can given a tough situation, a tough hand he was dealt, right? Oh, he's a former Wall Street investment banker? Yeah, but that doesn't mean that he's going to play favorites and just go easy on his old friends, right? Oh, he did go easy on his friends. Awesome. Mm. So the whole no connection between money and inflation thing could be potentially a huge ruse. I think we need a little bit of humor here because unfortunately, despite what you might be hearing from the government or the media, inflation is here to stay, at least for a while. And there's not really a solution that is pain-free for the American people. I think the, the cold reality is that to these folks in power, you and I are not their first priority. They have many other interests that outrank the needs of the average American. So it's kind of on us to figure out how to deal with this in real time and in real life. Like, you know, when I used to go to the grocery store to buy fresh chicken breasts um, to cook at home, now I'm finding myself buying more ground meat because it's a little bit cheaper. Our government has kind of made its bed and we're here to deal with the consequences. And I think that's kind of the lesson here today. Those are my thoughts for the week. I hope everyone is doing all right. Uh, I would love to hear from you. So please uh, write to me in the comment section below. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and want to help support my work, please do take that quick second to click on that like button, share this video with other people, subscribe, and if you feel inclined, hit that notification bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos. As always, thank you so much for your time, and I'll see you next week.